Thank you for joining us for this virtual tour of a rehabilitation pasture experiment that we conducted here at the South Dakota State University Dakota Lakes Research Farm near Pierce, South Dakota. I'm Cody Zilverberg and Dwayne Beck is the farm manager. Uh, the two of us and the rest of our crew out here worked on this one together. This is drone imagery flying over the experimental area. If you look closely you might be able to see some of the treatments running in straight lines in a crossing pattern down there. Uh, this pasture was continuously grazed by renters until we took it over in 2017. Uh, had a long history of continuous grazing and had been pretty much converted over to exotic C3 grasses, primarily crested wheatgrass on the north side, smooth brome on the south side, with plenty of cheatgrass in there and some Kentucky bluegrass too. And so once we took it over, we wanted to try to convert this and bring it back to being dominated by more of the C4 native tall grasses. And so we used a combination of herbicide and seeding treatments to do that. As we descend toward the pasture here, you can get a little better idea of what you've been seeing from up above. A lot of those green spots uh, that you see, the plants that you saw up above, turns out that they are western ragweed. But as we get down closer, you'll see we also have quite a few uh, native tall grass plants in here. Now a lot of these are still juvenile plants and not as large as they will get to be, but there's some big blue stem waving in the wind there. This is a matrix of the seeding and herbicide treatments that we applied. You can see uh, running east-west or right-left uh, the three different seeding treatments where we put no seed uh, for our control or we uh, drilled grass seed or we drilled grass seed plus forb seed and then and those were randomized for each block and then running up and down or north south uh, we had four herbicide treatments uh, no herbicide applied uh, glyphosate applied atrazine applied or glyphosate and atrazine both and so this whole uh, set of 12 treatments was randomized in, in the experiment and we also had two stocking rates, a low stocking rate and a high stocking rate. This shows the canopy cover by species after we had applied glyphosate to some of the treatments in spring of 2017. And you can see that where we didn't apply the herbicide, we were very much dominated by those exotics. But where we did apply the herbicide, the, the Roundup, the glyphosate, that is, uh, we had a very good control of them. 2017 turned out to be extremely dry. There just wasn't moisture to get those seeds going that we had put in the ground. We grazed this uh, the first two weeks of June and then we got off of it and we didn't come back until uh, we grazed it for two days in October, right before this picture was taken. And in the meantime, uh, it was not grazed at all. When we did graze it, we had uh, two different stocking densities, high and a low. And, and so any particular part of this was only grazed for hours or up to a couple of days at the most. So fast forwarding now to June 5th, 2018. Uh, the cows are out here. This cow is mowing down some cheatgrass. The cheatgrass does have seed on it, but it's not mature yet. Uh, the other cows were going after the smooth brome here and a lot of the sedges. Actually, the first thing they ate here is the sedges tended to ignore the uh, needle and thread. What you're looking at here is, of course, one of the treatments that was not sprayed with glyphosate. So it still has uh, more or less the original composition of species in it. These cows have just entered a high density grazing paddock and they pretty much spread themselves all the way around it so you can get a good idea of, of how dense they are here and I estimate this was about 175,000 kilograms of animal per hectare for our high density treatment. Our low density treatment uh, was closer to 30,000 or a little more than that, 30,000 kilograms of animal per hectare. 2018 turned out to be just as dry as 2017, so we had a very tough time trying to get those plants established. Now, we did begin to see some of our seeded species, some of these tall grass native C4s appear in 2018, but they were few and far between. 
Now this shot is from uh, May 10th of 2019. So the, the herbicide treatments are still clear, very clear to see here as you can just look right down the line of where we applied the herbicide and controlled the C3 grasses and where we didn't. June 3rd, 2019. This area was grazed during a heavy rainfall and it was at a low stocking density, about 35,000 kilograms per hectare. But you can see the, the hoof impact that it had upon the soil. And if you just look across the way to the where they were grazing the previous day and the fence is no longer there because it was a temporary electric fence, but there's no evidence of hoof impact at all uh, where they grazed the previous day. In 2019, we finally got some rain. And so this is the third year after seeding, and we began to see a lot of the seeded species come up. And it, it was patchy, but there were, there were a lot of them there. A lot of them were still very young, you know, juvenile plants, but they were coming. And so I went out and I counted every single plant from the seeded species that we had put out there in, in all the plots. And this graph shows what I found, where we did not plant, we really found nothing. They, they didn't come up there. And we had hypothesized that there might be some dormant seed in a seed bank and, and we just didn't see any evidence of it. Uh, and then the next group where we put seed in the ground but we didn't apply a Roundup, again, we were not successful. So apparently we had to suppress those exotics if we wanted any hope of success. And then the third group on the right, that's the group where we applied seed you know, with the drill and we also sprayed with Roundup in the spring of 2017 and, and that's where we actually saw some success. And this plot is in plants per 800 square feet uh, but if you convert this to metric units it comes out to about one plant per square meter. Now the other thing you can see here from the that part way on the right is that there is a high degree of variability in how many plants there were uh, per square meter or those areas because the establishment was very patchy. This is a photo that kind of illustrates that patchiness, the, the success but also the patchiness. You can see a lot of uh, tall grass species in this picture, mostly big blue stem plants and they're, they're getting to be a pretty good size now. But they're surrounded with a lot of uh, other species. There's a lot of diversity in this little spot here and a lot of those speeds are, species are fairly undesirable from a, a grazing perspective, uh, especially from a cattle grazing perspective. But we're, this is the kind of thing we're happy with. It's it, a lot of diversity and a lot of those native C4 grasses are back into this system. So now we're looking at the pasture in September 4th, 2020, and what an amazing transformation this has been. We got some more moisture in 2020 again, and it, now we've got a system that's dominated by big blue stem instead of crested wheatgrass and smooth brome. And there's also some some taller weeds in here like mare's tail and prickly lettuce. Uh, we saw, you know, after the glyphosate was applied, some of those annual species did move in and took advantage of that situation. But I suspect that they will disappear over time. So the area we're walking through was both seeded and got the glyphosate application back in 2017. And now we're moving out of that area and we're about ready to move into an area dominated by a ragweed. And this is an area that was seeded back in 2017 but did not receive any herbicide at that time. Now it did get sprayed with herbicide in the November of 2019 and so that's why you don't see the the cool season grasses in here anymore because they just got taken out uh, the year prior. So this would be the first year that they were not in there. And we can see the ragweed moved in. We also had three on and uh, sand drop seed. So not really desirable species from a, a grazing perspective. And now we've moved back into that a tall grass area again. So this is an area that was sprayed with glyphosate in 2017 and seeded. And we'll just walk through this and come out the other side again this is still in that area. Uh, you see the shorter statured vegetation. And so this is where it's a little bit patchy, you know, where we didn't have as good of establishment. And now we've moved into the ragweed once more. Again, this is an area we got a very consistent result where if we did not spray, we did not get establishment. To conclude, I'd like to acknowledge our funding sources, the research farm itself, the Howard G. Buffett Foundation, and the NRCS 
And the field work besides Duane and myself, field work was also done by our technicians and our students, Gary, John, Sam, Brennan, Natalie. Thank you to everybody.